If you call him, he will answer. If you call him, he will answer. If you call him, he will answer. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Don't you know I'll be somewhere listening? I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Don't you know I'll be somewhere listening? I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want you to know <clears throat> when Jesus called, I want to be listening for my name. Oh, yes, I don't know what it is he wants me to do, how he wants me to do it. But I know one thing. I'm going to follow Jesus if I have to follow him all by myself. We welcome you to First Matter Ministries of Miracle. This is our Tuesday evening Bible study. Oh, the pastor, of course, of Fresh Manor is my wife, the prophetess Michelle Smith. <clears throat> Our spiritual mother is none other than the Apostle Mathena Ashley. And I am your faithful servant, the Elder Lee Anthony Smith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Today we're working on our series, Matthew 5 through 7. And we're talking about Jesus on the mount. Oh, Jesus preaching. Jesus is giving the word. And more importantly to us, he's setting the foundation on how we should live as Christians. This is the basis of his ministry. I don't see how anyone could preach the ministry of Jesus without having this foundation. Amen. I, it really is difficult to be a Christian without knowing these fundamental principles that Jesus is preaching at the mount. So if you can Go ahead and turn to Matthew 5, and we'll start at verse 31, and we'll make our way down to 40 in the next 30 minutes or so. Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, this is part 4. Amen? Let's go into prayer, and let's get into this word. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh, I thank you once again for the coming together. As we get into your sermon at the mount, let the word get into us so that we could share it with others. We thank you for this opportunity. Let this be a blessed message where the hallelujahs could go up to the boundaries of heaven and the blessings could come down. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, amen. We're talking about Jesus' sermon at the mount. Amen. And let's get a quick background on what's happening at the Mount. You know, Jesus is early in his ministry. Mm -hmm. Actually, he just got his disciples prior to that. Amen. He did his first miracle prior to that. Amen. He, was, he spent 40 days, 40 nights in the wilderness. Glory to God. No food, no drinks. And prior to that, John the Baptist didn't think he was worthy. John said, I'm not worthy to baptize you. But Jesus said, let it be so, because the word must be fulfilled. And John the Baptist baptized Jesus. So here we are now. Uh, he goes on further in chapter 5. He talks about we're the light of the world. Mm -hmm. He talks about how we could clean up our conflicts with our brothers. Amen. He talks about adultery. How if you got a part of your body that is offending you, instead of you going to hell, cut that part off. Pluck out the eye if you must. But we know that we have Jesus. We could come to in prayer now and he could fix it because we have the Holy Spirit within us. Amen. He also talked about glory to God that we should pray and fast and use the spiritual guidance of Jesus to get us from one point in life 
to the next, especially if we're not getting along with a brother or sister. He talks about all of that so far until we got to verse 31, and some of this continues. Amen? The adultery and the conflict parts, definitely. So let's look at Matthew 5 and 31, and it says, It had been said, Who shall ever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. Glory to God. This is for the guys in particular. If you are planning on, yes, not, you, you, you don't work out the marriage and the marriage is not working out after you don't did your part and you're gone, you know, leave her, don't just put her away. You get that divorce, make it legal. But he goes on to say something here. If you look at 32, he says, But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of bonification. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, you got a wife who's been caught in the act of, you know, messing around, causes her to commit adultery. If you put your wife away, what he's saying, even through divorce, except if bonification took place in that marriage, you go ahead and do what you have to do with the divorce. However, and whosoever shall marry her, that is divorce, committed adultery. Amen. He's saying simply put, adultery will continue because the lady that was married and you decide you're going to be with her, you're still committing adultery. Except bonification. And we also know that through the blood of Jesus, amen, you could get cleansed of the past and move forward. So we've got to keep this in mind about how important when we make the wedding vows, they are not something that we should take lightly. This is something that we have to hold dear to. Amen. So uh, let's go ahead to 33. Again, you have heard that it have been said by them of old times. Amen. And usually when Jesus says this throughout this sermon, he's setting it up for a little, I won't say change, but he's adding on or taking away something that was in there. Amen. And he says here, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oath. Okay. You have heard. Amen. He's talking about something that's been written in the law that you've been practiced usually. That it was said to our people long ago. This was happening back in a different time period. Back in the Old Testament for sure. When you make a vow, you must not break your promise. Keep the vows that you make to the Lord. If you make it in the name of Jesus, who's our Lord, if you make it in the name of our Heavenly Father, keep that vow. And he goes on in 34, but I say unto you, swear not at all. Mm -hmm. Don't say in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father. He's saying, don't do it. Neither by heaven, for it is God's throne. Mm -hmm. So we can't be just going around using the Lord's name in vain. Glory, hallelujah. We've got to keep it holy. Don't let what we're going to promise to someone or what we intend to do. Don't go that high is what he's saying. They're going to the thrones of heaven to make your vows to people. Keep heaven out of it. Hallelujah. He goes on in 35. Nor by the earth, for it is the foot, footstool. That's God's footstool. Boy, earth right here where we live at. So we're not swearing by earth. We're not swearing by the things of heaven or by Heavenly Father or the Son. Neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Amen. Um, don't make our vows using the name of the earth because the earth belongs to God as well. Don't make a vow using the name of Jerusalem. Because it is the city. One day where Jesus is going to come back and be the kings of kings forever. So don't swear 
by things of the earth or by Jerusalem. And we already talked about by things that are in heaven. That includes our Father and the Son. Hallelujah. Some lot of us do that. Oh, I swear to you. Okay? But you didn't make that vow yet. By what? You just say, I swear. It may be understood that you're talking about heaven. So we got to be careful about this word. Amen. 36. Neither shall thou swear by the head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. Okay, don't use yourself either. Or, and I hear people do this a lot. And I swear by my, my sister. I swear by my mother. Let us not put them in jeopardy because of our, our instincts that we have right now that may not fulfill it later on. Amen. Very dangerous thing. Hey, glory to God, glory to God. All right. Um, 37. But let your communication be yea. Yea or nay, nay. Yea means yes. Nay means no. For whatsoever is more than these coming of evil. So, yes. If someone's, you're going to tell someone you're going to do something or they ask you are you going to do it. Yes or no. That's simple. The swearing part, and this is the basic of Christianity now. This is not Elder Smith. This is Jesus preaching at the mount, telling you, don't swear by heaven. Because a lot of us do it. We are swear by God. Oh, I swear by a person. He said, don't even swear by your own hair that's on your head. Yea and nay is sufficient. Yes, I will do it. No, I will not do it. You don't need to take it to a higher level. Whew, I got to work on that one myself. I'll be honest. Amen. 38. Ye have heard that it been said, an eye for eye and a tooth for a tooth. Amen. It's talking about revenge. Mm -hmm. Back in the old law, they had it to wear what you do to me, I could do back to you. But now he's saying no. As we get into 39, and it's called revenge. But we know vengeance belongs to God, not to us. So that eye for eye, tooth for a tooth concept is over. It doesn't exist in the kingdom of God, never have, and we can't let it exist as Christians, the disciples of Jesus. Amen. 39. But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Okay, you know this is at home now, and you know what's happened of recent days with uh, Will Smith going up on stage in front of the world and smacking Chris Rock, but Chris Rock didn't respond. Then respond, not with a fist back. I will say this. A lot of people who were raised in on the streets would say, ah, no one should have smacked you and got away with it. You should have smacked them back. But if we think about the ramifications, what would have happened? Let's, let's not talk holiness for a minute. Let's just think reasonable. What would happen if we would have came back? Will Smith is a trained fighter. How do we know? Because he trained to play Muhammad Ali in the movie. He's a trained fighter. That's all to it. He's a bigger man. He's a taller man. What good would it have done for Chris Rock to try to come back on him? It would have done no good. It would probably been worse. The situation was already out of control. Thanks to Chris Rock, just letting it go right there. We avoided a very, it was already embarrassing enough. <laughs> it didn't get worse. And we have to think, I don't know if we got God in him or not. I don't know. But I know one thing. It could have got totally out of control with a fight going on on that stage. 
Glory to God. I'm sure Will Smith feel bad about what he did. I'm sure he thought about it. I thought he was going to hit me back, and I would have really let him have it. But he didn't hit me back. I am pretty sure he walked away in shame. Glory to God. Okay, we're not going to devote any more to that. But this is an example of 39. Someone hit you in one cheek. Jesus says, turn the other as well. Someone stepped on your toes. If they doing that as a sign of punishment, the best thing to do, just let them step on the other one too. Let's not escalate the situation at hand. Let us be the peacemaker. Let us be the one who could keep things at, as the, they teach cops. A lot of them don't do it. But they teach law enforcement officers to de-escalate. Let's not make it worse than what it is. Sometimes they, I've seen some cops who could do a good job with it, but I've seen others who just lose their cool, and they just that's how people get shot. That's how people get in handcuffs a lot of times, because they can't de-escalate. We, as Christians, have got to be the ones who keep the peace because the eyes of the world are upon us. They are seeing how we're going to react to what is put in front of us. You don't think the world was looking at Chris Rock and seeing what he was going to do? He did the right thing. He held his peace. Was it easy? I'm sure it wasn't. But he did. There are going to be some who say, ah, he's a wimp. Jesus talked about that earlier. If Chris is in Jesus and he's doing it because he knows this is the holy thing, let them call you a wimp because Jesus got your back and revenge belongs to God and not to us. Hallelujah. You'll get your blessings in heaven. We can't take on the world. My apostle and my wife love to say this. They'll say this. You can't swat at every fly or every gnat. <laughs> you can't get them all. Sometimes you just got to go ahead and do what you got to do. Amen. Let it go. So I pray that as Christians, we don't view the idea. And a lot of us was taught. A lot of us taught. If he hits you, you better hit him back. If you don't, some parents will go to that next level. If you don't hit him back, I will hit you myself. That kind of teaching is why the jails are crowded with all people. I'm being honest. It's why our kids sometimes get in trouble. We have got to back away from that. That is not of Christ. Christ says that ye resist not evil, but who so evil is come is telling you head back. Come at him. Oh, you come stronger. Show them that you're the man. A real man will follow Jesus. Because a real man is going to teach his children how to make it into the kingdom. How to avoid going to jail later on. That's a real man. You can say what you want. I understand the values of the street. I'm from New York City. I know how it works. A man could walk away. A man will dissolve it. He will de-escalate. Because the minute you throw that next punch, it done move to another level. No telling what could happen at that point. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus didn't say this just to be saying something. He's teaching us how to survive, even in the streets of New York. Avoid that next punch. Avoid it. De-escalate. He says, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, he said, if you must do something, turn the other one. Most people that I know even the ones who call themselves hardcore are not going to sit there or stand there and continue to just hit someone who's not hitting you back. Most people. Now, there's some who just, you know, they're out of it. They're drunk. They're on drugs. And they just can't control themselves. And they keep on. But most will just stop. Will Smith stop. Hands up. You want to give him some credit? That one was all he did, and he walked away. Just thank God that he didn't take it any further. We 
have got to de-escalate situations. Sometimes, and I remember my pastor in the day, he taught this, and I didn't understand it, but he said, don't give up on God. Sometimes you have to give up your rights. We know we got rights. That's a big thing. This is why we got this mask problem going on right now. This is why we got the COVID vaccine problem, because we have rights. But he says, sometimes you have to give up your rights for someone else's wrong. Now, I didn't get it until I found out one day that Jesus died so that I could have life and have it in abundance. He gave up all of his rights. How do I know? He never sinned. Never sinned. Never committed any kinds of sin whatsoever. He gave up his rights for my wrongs, for your wrongs, for our children's wrongs, for mommy and daddy wrongs. We are going to be like Jesus. We're going to be his contemporary disciples. Sometimes we're going to find we have to give up our rights for the wrong of others. Jesus stayed on that cross. Oh, they was tempting him, telling him, come down from that cross if you be the son of God. Oh, yes, prove yourself to me. <laughs> okay, prove to me that you're a son of God. Come off that cross and save yourself. Jesus followed the commandments of his heavenly father. He followed to his death. He said we should listen to every word that proceeded out the mouth of the heavenly father. God sent him on a mission. Oh yes, Adam and Eve messed up when they ate the forbidden fruit because the serpent tempted him. The serpent came at Jesus after 40 days of 40 nights of not eating, not pleasing the flesh at all. And here comes Satan. Oh yes, telling him, mm -hmm, if you be the son of God, do this, do that. Took him to the higher pinnacle of the temple and said, look out there, all of that is yours. If you bow down and serve me, Jesus was not tempted, even at the fact when the devil said, if you take this stone and turn it into bread, if you're hungry, if you be the child of God, prove yourself. Jesus did not bow. He got it right. Hallelujah. He didn't go. He did not let the devil do it again. He denied him the victory over you, over me, over our loved ones. It exists no more because Jesus said we don't live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out the mouth of our heavenly Father, hallelujah. Glory to God. He defeated it. Oh, yeah, some say, what do you mean by he's the second Adam? Adam and Eve have messed up with the fruit. They wasn't that hungry because they had it all. But they ate the fruit anyway. Jesus was definitely of hunger, but yet he didn't do it. Oh, <laughs> God, hallelujah. Because he loved us so much. He died on the cross so that we could have life and have it in abundance. And we have the keys now to defeat the devil because the Holy Spirit lives within us. The devil's not going to mess with the Holy Spirit. He knows better. His demons know better. Glory to God. So we have the right to the kingdom because Jesus gave up his rights for our wrong. When we mess up now, oh, he said, how many times you can forgive someone? Seven times, 70. And that's in one day. That means you forever forgive him. You don't stop. We thank him. Glory to God. Let's get to the last one. Verse 40. And if any man will sue thee at the law, that means take you to court. Amen. And this is what he said to try to resolve that. Usually that's money. Usually. Or land. Or at that time it would have been cattle, more or less. He said, if any man try to sue thee at law and take away thy coat. Okay, they want to take away your coat. He says, let him have thy cloak also, the cloak is also another part of the garment that they wore back then. Glory to God. There's another one that says, give them, uh, if you take away your shirt, give them your coat as well. 
<laughs> Glory to God. I think that's in the New International Version. Hallelujah. What Jesus is doing, he's teaching us how to be Christians. Even though the term Christian didn't come into play yet. Amen. I think they was called the way pretty much. Not even then. It was called nothing. They was just here in this world. Amen. But he's laying down a foundation of what it is we should be doing, how we should do it. Glory, glory, hallelujah. I'm going to close up here. Amen. We are on verse 40. Next week we'll start with 41 through 50. Amen. In closing, Jesus' way is a peaceful way of resolving conflict. I'm looking at Ukraine and Russia. Russia had a problem with Ukraine, whether we agree or not, because I didn't agree. I still don't buy it. But the thing is, how are they going to resolve it? With a military, and they're paying a price for it. Jesus told Peter, a man who lived by the sword dies by the sword. And they have lost much more than what they thought was possible. How did that happen? Simply put, they, glory to God, used the sword, used the guns, and they lost six generals already. They don't lost more people fighting the Ukrainians than they did fighting the Afghanistans for nine years. We have got to learn how to resolve. We have got to come to peaceful solutions. Jesus is laying it out. They hit you on one side, turn the other side. And that goes for a lot of things in life. If they tear up your stuff, give them something else to tear up. Instead of going after them, you keep your peace. You stay right with Jesus, and it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right, by and by, and you'll get your blessings, because Jesus, don't forget. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. As Christians, we must adhere. We must live by the teaching of Jesus and not by what man tells us to do. Man can't put you in heaven or hell. Jesus is going to do that. So I'm going to abide by what Jesus say. Glory to God. They will tease you. They will taunt you. Oh, they don't think they can do that to Jesus. They stripped strip them of his clothes. Beat them beyond recognition. Put a sign above them, teasing them as being the king of the Jews, saying, look at your king. <clears throat> Jesus did not strike back. He didn't come for that. He came to be sacrificed so that you and I could live. He came to give us the word, the, up, the word as we should be living it. Because the law that came out, don't get to the point where the Pharisees, Sadducees, the scribes, and the priests, they couldn't live by it. So he came to set things right. He didn't change it. He just, I didn't come to change the law. I came to fulfill it. Because within that law, there was prophecies that was told about the Messiah. Jesus told him, I am the Messiah. I am he. I come. Not to take away. He didn't punish anybody when he walked this earth. No one died because Jesus was here. In fact, many were saved. Think of Lazarus. Brought him back. Now, when I say no one, I don't mean no one died because Jesus said, okay, like he did the fig tree. <laughs> he did not do that to any man. In fact, many, many, many were saved, and they learned what we are teaching now, and it's being passed down. This is why Christianity, some 2,000 years, is still going strong. They wonder, why do people want to chop off Christians' heads? Something about the truth. <laughs> Something about the truth. They can't take it. The devil can't take it. Glory to God. So we thank God for this message. I pray that you've been blessed by it. We'll close out with the benediction. Amen. But we'll be back next week. Starting at 41 on chapter 5 of Matthews. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what's been done today as we leave. Let us not leave the word. Let's keep it within our heart. Let's remember how Jesus taught us how to resolve situations that may come against us. For those of us who have sinned, let us remember we could go back to the, oh yes Lord, to the throne of grace and mercy and ask for forgiveness. We do these things and the one who said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
You have a blessed week. And remember, tomorrow night at 7.30, right here on YouTube, that's Wednesday nights, Pastor Smith will come with a word and with prayer. So be on tomorrow with us, if you can. In Jesus' name, be blessed.